All right, what's up everybody? So at the time this is released, I am on vacation, but this is my final upper body session before I do head out. So I figured I'd release something for you guys and this is probably the perfect thing to do. So when it comes to this session, this is my final upper body session that I do each week, the third session. So the focus on this is to target everything in the upper body. The opening superset that I'm using here is a Smith machine press paired up with an incline curl. And the reason that I pick these two lifts to start off with, one is just the sequence that I personally prefer and recommend for upper body sessions, but two, as far as the exercise selection within that muscle group that I'm choosing, I'm picking two lifts that are actually pretty similar in their purpose, which is to provide a strict stabilized lift that I can take very, very close to failure if not to failure in some cases, but the aim is to get to zero reps in reserve. As you can see with the Smith bench and with this incline curl that you're seeing here, watch this rep. It's just an absolute grinder. Both of these lifts do an incredible job of setting you up to be able to grind out strict but very challenging reps to get you close to muscular failure and activate as many muscle fibers as possible. So both of these lifts... I do quote unquote cheat a little bit. I have a little bit of an arch in my press and this is okay because the purpose of this lift isn't to try and get a nice stretch or to get more out of less weight. The purpose of this lift is to take a stable setup that allows me to push as close as I possibly can to failure or to zero reps in reserve, which is what I'm taking to uh, taking the lift to here. And as you can see, the final couple reps, especially that last rep is activating everything. I'm putting every ounce of effort I have into the final reps here. And you can see the same thing on this incline curl. The reason I'm doing these in, in the incline setup is one, a little bit of the stretch. It's, it's beneficial for sure. But two, it's hard to cheat. And of course, I round forwards with my upper back a little bit to try and get the rep up at the start. But the reps are controlled. I lean back about a quarter of the way up, and then I control the descent. I'm activating as much as I possibly can. And when it comes to hypertrophy, that's a great thing to have in your mind when you're doing each lift and when you're choosing your setup for each lift. And of course, not every lift has to be that way, but I love to have at least one lift where you're just activating as much as you possibly can. And generally that's a good rule of thumb, but of course every lift does serve its own purpose. This machine press, of course it's gonna be in the same boat as the Smith bench. The only variation here is it's an incline machine. It's converging too, and you can also get more of a stretch since the handles aren't connected. So an arch here actually does help you get more of a stretch, not less of a stretch, because the handles can go past your chest. So what I'm doing here is taking this lift actually to failure, because why not? There's no reason for me to not take this lift to failure. I mean, of course, that doesn't mean everybody should take a machine press to failure because you want to occasionally try and get more out of less. But for myself, where I've trained myself for years on end to handle this type of effort, this type of volume and intensity, it can't really hurt me to take that lift to failure. And that's my final set of pressing for the chest specifically for that day. So I have that room to really just, even if I know I'm not going to get that final rep, at least just press it up for a second and put every ounce of effort that I have into that sticking point and just get everything activated. And that's one thing with muscle growth is you have to just force it to happen. Your muscles aren't gonna activate just because you're squeezing them a little more or really trying to think about the mind-muscle connection. Of course, mind-muscle connection plays a role, but mechanical tension in putting all of that effort that you can in is what drives growth. You have to make it happen. There's no fancy tricks, it's purely effort. Up next, what you're seeing here is a Smith Machine JM press. I do these modified a little bit. So the way that I basically do this lift is almost like, think of a front squat for your quads. It's very similar to that, where my elbows travel very far forwards. And what I'm aiming to do here is maximizing the range of motion at my elbow. Of course, in the purpose of that is to maximize the stretch on my tricep. So a lot of people do JM presses, and arguably this is the correct way to do them, is to treat them as a, a mix between a, a close grip bench and a skull crusher, but to more, more so bias the skull crusher part. So maybe it's 75% 
are kind of an arbitrary number, but maybe 75% of a skull crusher with 25% of a close grip bench. The way that I like to do these is just to purely bias that press and just get as much stretch as I possibly can at the tricep. And for myself, triceps being a muscle that I've always struggled to grow, I think primarily because of genetics, but secondarily, because I haven't trained it properly and through a full range of motion, what I'm learning is that lifts like this JM press and what you'll see in my next lift for triceps, my pushdowns, I emphasize that range of motion and I maximize as much as I possibly can. So it's a little bit difficult to see based on the angle, but if you were to see this from the side, my wrist is almost touching my shoulder. And I'm not saying everybody should jump into this extreme range of motion immediately. It's definitely something you have to work up towards. And I do generally recommend to reserve this for the more intermediate or advanced guys once you actually have more meat around your elbows and your tendons have built up some strength along with your elbow joint. But this lift has been a game changer for me for the triceps. And you'll see it's a similar concept that I put into play with these pushdowns here. So typically I'd be doing these actually on an incline bench like you might have seen in my tricep video. But the emphasis here, since my basically long story short, my I can't fit my cable station back into the same spot it was without removing some of the drywall off the ceiling. It's an easy project that I'm just procrastinating on. So basically I can't fit my bench there. Besides the point, look at the top end of that range of motion. Look how high up my wrist is coming. Look at the angle of my elbow. Look at that. That's what's been growing my triceps. So I would recommend film your tricep lifts. Sometimes it feels like we're getting more stretch than we actually are, but actually watching your lifts back and getting a look at your joint angles is going to be key. So of course, these are slightly cheated. At this point, I'm just... I don't want to say I'm, I'm too strong for pushdowns, but I think at a point where you're lifting for six, seven, eight years, you get pretty strong <laughs> when you lift consistently and build up muscle. It's very difficult to do the lifts that I used to love to that were very strict. It's very difficult to do that now where I do have to use different setups like that bench. So to modify around this for my stronger guys, I would recommend using an incline bench for your pushdowns, but using that setup where you bend forward at the hips and do a bit of a split stance and really just put your chest and shoulders over uh, the weight and over that cable, it can help a lot. Another lift I've been using a ton recently is these cable cuffed lateral raises. The reason for this is because my delts have never really got much of a weighted stretch. And of course, these aren't entirely stretch biased, but they're length and biased. As you can see, the setup of the cable is just above knee height. It's about where my hands would hang if I was just to let them rest by my sides. The reason this is helpful is because when you do a normal dumbbell lateral raise, the top of the movement is biased. So when, you're, when the dumbbell gets closer to shoulder height, it gets heavier and heavier because it's fighting more against gravity. With the cable, it has the most tension when there's a 90 degree angle between the cable itself and my forearm. So you can see when that angle is taking place, it's towards the bottom of the movement. And my shoulders haven't really ever got a stimulus like this. So I don't need a whole ton. Usually one to two sets on each side for me is perfectly fine. And I'm slowly, of course, as I adapt to this, going to be adding volume, adding weight, adding reps, adding intensity. And this is a lift that you can push hard on. You can take it past failure especially for myself where I'm very used to these uh, ridiculous methods for my delts to say the least. I'm sure I've talked about this before on the channel where I used to do all this crazy volume, crazy intensity techniques. So for me, this is actually quite easy and I'm happy that I'm able to get more out of less. I don't know how long this will last me, but I'm still growing my side delt and I'm still adding reps on this lift. So I'm going to stick with it for the time being. So that's pretty much all I've got for today, guys. I will see you in the next one.